Greetings, hi, the war Al greets you, and I'm going to be showing you here once again another 5 versus 5 Counter-Strike Global Offensive match. This one going to be between TSM and the Ninjas in Pajamas here. And it will be a best of one series pistol round starting right away right here from Face It. We have Freiburg here, four health left, sneaking through. My goodness, it is a three versus three now, and Freiburg amazingly takes that player down. Down to four health right now. And Terra is trying to get this bomb planted. One player adds CT spawn right now. One is inside of jungle. Freiburg now at one health, narrowly avoiding a grenade, down to just one percent. Watching that corner right now. Exist is going to plant in a safe plant position. So the player from CT can't see him. Freiburg setting up inside of the connector. Thinks the player's going to jump out a window. It's a common thing to do. And Freiburg still inside of the connector right now. Exist charges forward and takes out device. Now puts it into a one versus two. Zipnix has got to watch both sides right now. Exist going for the jump blocks and boom! Takes him down with a burst fire to the face. That's going to be one point now for the ninjas in pajamas starting this match off quickly. So it's going to be a Mirage of course. Best of one. These are always crazy. They could go either way. This match really could go either way. But TSM right now is rated higher than the ninjas in pajamas. So you probably got to give it to TSM at this point. And this is all. This is kind of a map that this team is known for choking, which is which is really interesting in a number of major tournaments. All right. So they're going to be trying for this second round buy up. Two players with scout. Ninjas in pajamas has three AK-47s and two submachine guns. Oh my goodness. Well, that just changed drastically. I was going to say Ninjas in Pajamas has a great chance of winning this. Kerrigan there gets a headshot with the scout. Wow, Ninjas in Pajamas just getting absolutely destroyed. Didn't even get a single kill, and that is a second round steal from TSM. Now, this is a situation where generally the, the terrorists are going to be doing a buy up, but I don't think they really should. If you look at their money right now, they can't even afford Tech 9s, and you need to be able to get to the threshold of buying. Te oh, they're going for it. They don't even care. They are going for it. They're not going to be buying helmets is the thing, which kind of makes sense, especially considering that TSM just stole those four AK-47s. So yeah, the reason you keep buying up like this is an economic reason. You want to get that early economic advantage. And it, it makes sense for them to buy here because if they were to save, they'd have to save two rounds in a row. So yeah, once again, makes sense for Ninjas and Pajamas to go for this win and spend their money. If they lose it, just wait an extra round before buying up fully. And a prenade goes down. Forrest the Pistol King with his CZ sneaking up here. I'm surprised he's not using a Tech 9. I will be honest. Now get right. Taking some damage from Dupree here. They're going to be splitting at bombsite B. So here's Cajun B to hold this off. In a good position to do so. And easy peasy lemon squeezy exists. Comes in from the other side. But he's not going to be able to make much of a dent there into TSM. Just losing one player. TSM is so far ahead economically right now. They didn't lose a single player on the second round. They only lost a single player on that third round. And now Ninjas in Pajamas has to full save. They're going to get so far ahead. We're going to... I mean, they could even go into double op. Uh, you can... Uh, double op can work on Mirage, but generally you're only going to see single op playing at middle. This is a really nice spot for an op player. Just because they can rotate and help prevent an A push, which is exactly what's going to happen here. As we see the Ninjas in Pajamas getting ready to charge into the site. Smoke going down. Let's see if this actually dissuades him from, from pushing in. It is not. So here is Device in the Olaf Meister spot, waiting for these players to push in. Terrace kind of walk into the site and just get absolutely destroyed once again. TSM is very far ahead. Let's check out our economy right now. Look at that. We got players at, at 8,000 after buying 6,000, 8,000, 6,000. This is incredible. TSM is so far ahead. Zipnik's holding on to this FAMAS as well, which is interesting because he could upgrade to an M4. Or even good, they go into, could do into a, a double op strategy, maybe give Device an op. Device likes to do the secondary op. Why does, why does Kerrigan have the op? All right, I guess Kerrigan will be the opper on this. I was expecting it to be Device. Really, on TSM, a lot of the different players can op. Just, just as fine. Forrest sneaking through the underpass right now. is going to be picking off Cajun B. Oh, he takes a flash, though. The player was flashed. He would have been able to get that other kill if TSM didn't flash themselves out to escape. And that's the importance of throwing flashes to escape from positions that you have lost. Terrorists are now creeping around and have decided to take bombsite B. Alu is going to be playing Lurk here. Alu would love to get his hands on this AWP. 
All right, and they will be creeping through the tunnels right now. Forrest coming in through the underpass. Dupree typing, We have to stand together! Very dramatically there inside of the chat. And here comes the Lurk battle. The two Lurk players. Oh! <laughs> Alu just got destroyed. Hanging out of that FAMAS. Actually got the kill there. All right, three versus three now. Ninjas in pajamas just lost their advantage. Wow, Kerrigan not able to jump in there. A little bit of aim punchy stuff. Get right, gonna start lurking. Look at this, is behind um, the backstab. Gets through though. Get right inside of the smoke with this player. Down to three health. Oh, couldn't find him. Now puts it into a two versus two. This is a possible retake. I think TSM is gonna decide to save though. Even though this is a possible retake. Looks like they're just gonna set up to try to go for some exits. So Device is gonna watch short, and Zipnix is gonna watch in case they go through here. So if Ninjas in Pajamas decides to escape uh, through the kitchen, they will be safe, but they will not. Oh, Device actually changes around. Looks like there's gonna be a pause going down. Ninjas in Pajamas may be having some technical difficulties. That happens in these tournaments. And look at that, Get Right actually goes down. I think that was Get Right. To the bomb radius. So it looks like they're gonna pause right now. Oh, they're unpausing right away. All right, I'm not sure what's going on inside of the chat. Players having some difficulty. Yeah, we saw a lot of that from ESWC. Didn't really expect it from FaZe. They're still going. They're still going. So there's the off on Kerrigan. Gonna be playing mid with this thing. Ninjas in pajamas. Not able to afford their own just yet. But buying up once again here. Off of this win. Interesting to see Get Right sitting on a Galil. One player at underpass could actually destroy this offer. No, he's gonna fall back from that. Thanks to a good smoke at middle. One thing you can do about that smoke is just jump at it with your body and block it from going down. And you see where this smoke has landed? It is possible to do that. A lot of times players will land it on that little ledge here below in order to prevent players from being able to block it. All right, this is a great position to be in because you pretty much have control of the window if you chill here. Oh, look at this boost. This is really smart to try to, to trick a player there. You do not expect a player to be up here. So we'll just watch it from Cajun's point of view. Yeah, yeah, he didn't really expect him to be up there. Oh, he had his crosshair kind of placed there. And it's got to drop down now. They know where he is. Alu trying to push here at the apartments. Throws his own smoke. Makes it look like they're pushing there. Dupree has pushed all the way through a main. This is to get intel, and this is really smart, because he just got that intel. Now he can fall back and kind of say, all right, terrorists are going to be rotating back. They're inside of spawn right now. They're going to try to take A. However, they've allowed Exist to creep through middle. Nobody watching that. And just allowing him to get a connector. Nobody's watching this. And this is going to allow Ninjas and Pajamas a really good uh, push in here. Look, they can come in from three different angles. Poor Dupree's got to deal with all of this. Ooh, he's got Kerrigan on his back. Gonna trade himself in. This is actually bad for the terrorists now, because it's now two versus three. Exist goes for that tap shot and takes out Cajun. Device will finish the rest of them off. That's a two frag for him to end off this round. All right, TSM now at four points against Ninjas in Pajamas 2. Defeats them and forces them into a save. You can just see how that's kind of where that extra economy came into play. Ninjas in Pajamas so far behind that even after a win, one single loss, and they have to save again. And they're going to go for a very games push into Bombsite B. That's everybody just charging right through here. We should expect to see a defensive smoke go down, and they probably will pull off. Oh, there's a Molotov. That's even better. Well, nobody stood on it. He's got his prenade out as well. They're kind of expecting this. This is a very common thing to do on Eco. TSM has to have a good grasp of the economy at this point. That nade will miss. Well, I don't think the terrorists are going to be able to do very much there. And yeah, get absolutely just destroyed as they try to enter the site. They evaporated. Like Marines into Banelings, they just blah, they're gone. All right. Garrigan now with his... Hop continuing to play middle at 6 and 3. Wow. Zipnix only has died once so far. TSM starting it off very strong. Ninjas in Pajamas still low on the money. Is going to buy so that they can buy next round. They have to save again. You can see they're just so far behind economically. It's really rough. Interesting new smoking strategy. I want to see how this works out. I haven't seen this yet. With the players all below. And we'll watch this barrage of smokes beautifully fly over into the site. Oh, they've just split the site in two. This is super unique. Let's see if it pays off for them as they charge in. Well, they're going through a Molotov right now. 
This is a much better way to take the site. This is better than the, the Navi way to do it. And look, they actually have the site on a round that looked like it was really not going to happen for them. They just need to get that bomb and plant it. Well, now it's just Forest left. One versus three. Really nice attempt. I now frantically search for a pen to write down. I don't have a pen. This is amazing. I always have pens around. I wanted to write down that round. Let's commit it to memory, guys, because I want to make a video about that. That was awesome. That was round number eight of this game. All right. Love those smokes. Those are pretty awesome. Alu going to try to engage at middle. TSM finally feels in a position where they're going to be double opping. There we go. Device finally has the, has the secondary op for this. Let's see if Alu can get the pick, though. Alu, very gifted opper. Newest addition to the ninjas in pajamas. Has made them relevant again. Now, TSM is allowing the ninjas in pajamas to have mid control. Letting them make the first move. It's been working out for them so far, but look at this. Get right. Could even get boosted up here if he wanted to. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. We knew Get right wanted to get up there. Well, there's a pick from Kerrigan. Is he dropping back down? I think he's dropping back down. It's difficult to tell. No, 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 he got up here. He's going to try to sneak up behind these players at jungle. Terrace now have a site. They're creeping in. I, uh, get right. I guess he's waiting for a rotate. This is all happening while the take is happening here. Look at this. Get right has yet to push out. And he's let his whole team die. Now it's just him left. One versus five. Now, the goal is to put get right into a one versus two. If things go wrong. One versus five, not so much. I really feel like Get Right could have helped his team there. I understand what he was doing, trying to go for rotates, which is people ducking down and going through there to try to help at jungle. But maybe if he had pushed forward, his team would have had a better chance. Divided TSM's attention as they were taking bombsite A. And that's generally what the, the Lurk is going to do on this map. And he had not even able to kill those players. All right, TSM now 7-2, to two, destroying the ninjas in pajamas. It's just, you know, it's kind of a sad state to see the ninjas in pajamas in, where they're getting... Do you ever expect to see them getting dominated by TSM? Um, Ex-Dignitas. These guys used to be the Dignitas team from way back. Ninjas in pajamas, two, three years ago, when the game first came out, they defined the meta for the game. And now they're struggling just to maintain a Tier 1 status. I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with that comment. There are a lot of ninjas in pajamas fans. They are probably the most popular team. And for a good reason. They were number one undefeated for so long. Then they were number two in nearly every single final. Every single uh, major grand final. We got a major coming up. Let's see if they can maintain that and find their way into the grand finals once again. Ninjas in pajamas. Another very games push at a bombsite B. Armored tech nines. That all comes from the great mine of existence. Nice kill by Freiburg. You can always count on Freiburg to entry frag. Alu does not have armor right now, but he found that AK-47. Freiburg finds himself. Oh, Alu's dead. One thing you got to notice here is there's been a lot of op picks. Look at that device sitting at two right now. Karagbin has been doing a great job as well. Ninjas in Pajamas has getting their players picked consistently, and it's, it's been putting them at a major disadvantage. Look how far ahead TSM is economically. They're nearing 16k. I mean, at that point, they just won five rounds in a row. This is embarrassing right now for the ninjas in pajamas. They are getting spanked. Double op T side. Drastic times call for drastic measures. Forrest is going to try to go for the pick at mid. Where is Alu? Is he also at mid? Let's see if they can get it. Player has crossed. He doesn't know it yet. Alu going to be going at B. Zipnix. That's a scary spot because you can't get out of there. You're stuck. If they see him cross, Alu getting the pick into the site... Terrace just going to be doing a split B. There's nobody there. CT's in a very bad rotate and excellent smokes by the ninjas in pajamas, allowing them to just glide into the site. Bomb, Bomb going to be planted. CT's moving in quick. They are committing to this retake. They have the extra money. There's no reason to save. And it's not working out for them. Ninjas in pajamas finally figured it out. Finally found the chink in the armor here. Nice nade by Device taking out Get Right. He's still going for it in a 1v2. He's got enough money. He goes down to Alu. Look at that. Forrest even picking up the op. Gonna throw that thing. Oh no, he's actually the secondary opper for the team. Never mind. 
hanging on to that thing. Wow, TSM still able to buy up the double op for this. It's starting to get real here in the, the last third of this half. We're doing math now. Forrest is going to be picking. He's probably just going to chill and see if a player tries to push up here. I wouldn't expect him to run forward. He'd just chill right here. Exactly. Three players inside of A main. Ninjas in pajamas going for more of uh, Blitzkriegy, rushy type strategies at this point. Using their smokes to do so. They're not playing it standard. They're just pushing into sites at this point. And that seems to be what's working best for them now. Defensive smokes going out from TSM, though. Preventing this push, and nice pick by Get Right. I guess it's going to allow TSM to get some intel. Now, Ninjas in pajamas, there's too many smokes. They've decided to fall back from this. They're going to rotate all the way back into Bobside B. A lot of times, players will drop the bomb here in like an area like this, so that as they're pushing through, the players rotating can grab the bomb, and the other players can set up for the take. Ninjas in Pajamas is kind of moving as a glob right now, and that actually may throw TSM off. Notice how passive TSM is playing. They're creeping around the corners of the map, right? They aren't even worrying about the, con um, the connector right now. Get Right just chilling in connector. Get Right is waiting for rotates that never come, and he's been doing that this entire time. Existence got outplayed there. Exist with a nice control of the angle. And we have Dupree sneaking up from behind. There it is. Get right finally gets his lurk kill. And now it's a one versus four. It's not going to happen. So Dupree just going for those exits. All right. Ninjas in pajamas has finally found their stride, but it may be too little too late right now. TSM sitting at eight points. Are they going to choke once again on Mirage? Oh, man. Freiburg slow peaked that. I felt like Dupree should have gotten that shot. And we saw, I think he actually got the tap head shot. And... The question, can Ninjas in Pajamas win the rest of these? Because if they can win the rest of the rounds, they put themselves in a position to have a chance to win this game. There are three rounds left. Put themselves at, eight, at seven to eight. Moving over to the CT side. It's a good question. Let's see Kerrigan here. Actually going to be opping it from a different position at short right now. Again, look at this. CT's just allowing them to have control of middle. Kerrigan taking an alternate position. Going to kill him as they push up. Ooh, just saw the player. They now know where he is. Kind of awkward positioning. He's got to flash and smoke himself out of there. Nade's coming down. Needs to get out of there quickly before he goes down. All right. Has fallen back into the site right now. Get right. Creeping through that smoke. Look at this. Has made his way through there. He's got an op on another angle here. Kerrigan should be able to see him pretty soon. Oh. Just going to hold the wrong angle. Get right is already by here. Terrace working on taking B. They've rotated around the map. They're getting ready to burst into this site. This is what has worked out for them before. Get right just made some noise. Trying to kill the player at short. Kerrigan knows what's up and has rotated to help out. Dupree picks the lurk player for us who was chilling at middle. Here they come, pushing into the site. Kerrigan whiffs the first shot. Whiffs the second. And finally lands the third. Gets another close range, made up for it. And now it's just Alu left, one versus three. And he's got CTs moving in from all sides. One inside of the site creeping around, one behind him at the apartments. All right. And goes for the shot and just misses it. I don't think uh, his movement... On that shot, had stopped. He shot a little bit too soon. And even though his crosshair was directly on the enemy, because of that little bit of movement mistake, he missed it. It's the tiny, tiny little micro movements and corrections in this game that really makes or breaks individual play. Alu going to be going for picks over here at bomb site A. See if he just holds this angle right here. No, he's running forward. Look at this. Through the smoke! And that's not going to work out. Goes for a, a, a more JW, JW peak. And is just punished for it in a ridiculous extent. That's going to, that might even give TSM the round early. Forrest just spraying rounds right now. Ninjas in pajamas. Acting like a chicken with its head cut off right now. Doesn't feel like they can win any more points. Just throwing rounds around. Jumping through smokes and stuff. Trying anything. But nothing works. TSM is like a rock right now. Nothing can move them. And this is not the place to push. We got a three-player push against three-player defense. Device is starting to rotate, though, which is very good for the ninjas in pajamas. I think they think they're going for 
Oh, he's just gonna check middle right now in case they boost it up. Because look, again, TSM, not even worrying about mid control at all. They're giving that to the terrorist. Ninjas in pajamas has not been taking advantage of that. Terrorist getting ready to push into the site. 35 seconds. Ninjas in pajamas looking more like Navi right now. Oh, that's gonna be a good Molotov. That's gonna prevent Forrest from helping out at all. Freiburg, entry frags. Exist gets into the site. Now it's just Forrest left, and because of that Molotov, he couldn't help out his team. Going for the one taps, put into a one versus four. Niches and pajamas continually put in these ridiculous, impossible situations, and impossible is impossible, and he goes down. Dupree with a three frag that time, holding it off, doing a nice job. Last round of the half. Ninjas and Pajamas needs to win it, but they do not have the money. They have to go for the armor pistol. Let's see if they do that smoke over again that I was really excited about before. That would be kind of what you would do in this situation. No, they're doing something else. They're switching it up. They are spreading out across the map everywhere. They might be going for picks. Well, they got the bomb set up to go take A side. But they got two players over here. Probably going to go underpass to connector. Which, that would be great. Now Freiburg is Molotov'd off, though. Because if because uh, TSM is not really worrying about middle, we could have these players go through underpass, come through the connector, and then the terrorists can push into A from three sides. This, it really should work. It hasn't worked in the past. But this time they gotta work against that weapon advantage that TSM has. And look, Kerrigan this time is playing middle. Now rotating back. Oh, okay, so they're just gonna do the, the fake out. This is kind of a standard thing. Two players charging forward like they're gonna be taking B to try to bait out a rotate. And then the terrorists are going to push into A. There's two players still to deal with, though. Dupree in a close-range position. Well, that's a trade. That's actually good for the T's right now. CT's moving through underpass. CT's with a very fast rotate. Moving back over here. This was one of the B players. Is now in position. The smoke-off has happened. Focus on those rotating players. Wow, look at that. Alu again charges through a smoke to his demise. Bomb is planted. Get right. Has to ace this for the win. Bomb's planted in a spot he can watch. And he will go down. A valiant effort. But look at this. TSM will end the half 11-4 to against the Ninjas in Pajamas. There is the defuse. What a half. That was very TSM-sided. Very exciting. But now TSM takes the T side. And I feel like... Ninjas in Pajamas is going to play a better CT side. And I feel like TSM going to play a weaker T side. So we'll see what happens. Second half commencing pretty quickly here. TSM taking the T side. Let's see what they're going to be able to make happen. I'm a little bit worried about them here. I feel like they're weak T side for some reason. Cajun B has been playing an excellent game. It's at 16 and 9 right now. Look at the split. Two players going to mid real quickly. Alu. Looked like he was going to start charging up like Apex up middle. Not going to happen. Terrace moving into bomb site A right now. Dupree aggressively charging against Freiburg. Spams him down. Glocks are going to be more effective at the closer ranges because the USPs are going to be stronger than the Glock at the longer range. That was a perfect range to engage where Kerrigan was on Get Right. Where the Glock is, is just as accurate. But at longer distances, it's tough to use. All right, two versus two now. Bomb has been planted. Zipnik sitting at A main right now. Alu watching him, making sure he can't get back in there. And oh, wow, look at this. Ninjas in pajamas have taken the pistol round. Very important pistol round for them. Ninjas in pajamas in the past have struggled with pistol rounds, which is surprising since they have Forrest on their team, which has been the best pistol player of all time. Of course, not as strong in Counter-Strike Global Offensive as he was inside of uh, the original Counter-Strike. All right. This is where they got that bomb plant. They make the decision to save for the third round where they will be able to armor AK-47. This is the right call. And they're going to be pushing it to bomb site B. Let's see how Ninjas and Pajamas prepares for this because this is a common strategy you got to deal with. They got to expect this. And get right with a P90 to spray down this hallway. Apparently is the right call. They left one Lurk player now, but one player got picked, so three players to push in is going to be tough. Oh, Exist! On the other side of the map, picks that player down. Forrest not allowing them to enter into the site. He needs to pull out the pistol right now. There he goes. And ends him with a shot to the face. One health left again. It was Freiburg who had that one health on that pistol round. This time it was uh, Forrest. All right, TSM will be doing the arm, the uh, AK-47 third round after a bomb plant T-side. 
And we have the ninjas in pajamas. Now at the weapon disadvantage. And this is the strength of this. The AK-47 is a stronger weapon than the M4. Anybody who disagrees with that, you know, that whole personal preference thing, you're just wrong. <laughs> you're just, you're just wrong. Oh, almost got him. That was a real close attempt at a pick there. Looking like TSM wants to take bombsite B. Creeping up middle right now, moving over to short. Here's the short player, get right. Could start spamming through this smoke. Might even jump up. Oh, Forrest there inside of the ladder room picks those players off. Dupree on the other side of the map. Well, Freiburg gets killed by uh, Zipnix, who was lurking over here. We've seen a lot of lurk play from both of these teams. They've pretty much consistently had one lurk player on the other side of the map screwing around. Device just charging down middle right now. This is an aggressive play. Smoke out the window. TSM still going for it. They're not deciding to save. Bombs down inside of that window room. Four is still holding it. Let's see if Zipnix can take him out. He should know he's in there. Nice little pop flash around the corner. Forrest takes him down while completely flashed. What a shot. That was unreal. And Device can't even hit Alu. He's sitting at six health right there and tries to spray him down. I'll tell you what, guys. Let's get an Al Vision on that shot from Forrest. Ninjas in pajamas is looking very strong here. They just stopped TSM from getting into this game economically by knocking down that third round buy. TSM's got to save. Ninjas in pajamas is going to catch. They're going to catch back up here. It's 11 to 7. Interesting split by TSM. They got three players going underpass and two players pushing A main. That pre nade. Took Cajun B down to 21 health. They know they're there right now. They can hear him running around. Now, Forrest has got to be careful there. He left himself exposed from the other angle. Terrence is going to try to push in. Zipnix catches Forrest. Forrest had to flip a, a 180 there, but not going to happen. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and this is starting to look like the first half. CT sided. All right, TSM will be able to buy up right now. They cannot afford an op. They probably want to have one player opping at middle, or you can even use a player at A. You can use an op anywhere on this map, really. Are they throwing smokes in there? Looks like they are going to be smoking into A. They have that bomb in position. They're trying the same strat. Two players underpass, and then these three players pushing in. Oh, okay, so... Look how close they are right now. If Forrest pushes in, he may be able to pick these players. Dupree, look at he's just staring at the wall right now. I guess that's to avoid the flash. Zipnix is creeping through the apartments right now. Could get some massive kills right behind these players, setting up the smokes. Lines it up and picks two of them off. What a disaster for TSM. You always need to have a player watching just in case that happens. Dupree going to grab the bomb. Should probably fall back from this. Oh, he has his nade out. This is a disaster. Just going to be Zipnix left, cowering in the corner. Scared for his life. Fear in his eyes. And he will die. Look at that. We got like a perfect, um, perfect spread there. Three shots. Exactly how they teach policemen to fire. All right. Alu purchasing up the AWP here on CT side. We'll see where he's going to play from. Could be B. Probably going to be mid. And it looks like he will play the mid position. I see a smoke coming out, though. This smoke is to allow them to cross. I believe TSM was, was the team that made up that smoke years ago. Alu had a chance to block that smoke, but didn't. Terrace are setting up for an A take. They're trying it once again. It has not worked in the past. Where are the smokes? I think they're going to have to save if they screw this up. Actually, Blue Shell Effect is going to start to kick in. Terrace moving out. Defensive smoke going down at Palace. This is going to delay it. They can't push out now. Good flash on Fry. Actually, only half flash Freiburg there. One player gets over to the sandwich. Freiburg is still up. Freiburg doing some serious damage. 
Zipnik's getting in. Lurk player Kerrigan at middle. Just going to be get right left. One versus two. This looks like a good opportunity for TSM here. Oh, the bomb does not get planted. A very unfortunate position to plant that. He should have planted that at the mid position. Is that planted? No, it is not. He should have planted it right here because then his teammate could have helped him out. So it was just a mistake on choosing that bomb plant position. Kerrigan assumes get right rotated. That was a ballsy play right there. Actually, maybe he had a tell because he's playing like he knows exactly where he is. And Kerrigan taps down the spray player, get right. We had two very different styles of play go at each other right there. Get right likes to creep around the map and lurk and get behind people. And when he shoots, he has a very spray-centric style. At any range, he's just going to be holding down left mouse button. Whereas Kerrigan was going for those tap shots with the AK-47. And just very ballsily planted that bomb. If Get Right was at CT, he would have killed him. Cajun B picks off Alu at middle super quickly. Exist. Gonna, I thought he was going to pre-nade underpass there. Decides not to. There are players there, but they're falling back. Dupree can't afford an AK right now, which is interesting since they just won. Terrace have that mid-control. Notice Ninjas of Pajamas is working more on not giving that mid-control to these players. There's the smoke to block off mid. Going to leave Cajun here, and it looks like they're going to rotate back and just push into bombsite B. So here's Get Right. We'll see when he gets intel of this. When these guys decide to push. Defensive smoke is down right now. Zipnix is going to entry, it seems. And Get Right. Should keep jumping up here to check out what's going on. There we go. Sees what's going on. Throw in the pre-nade. TSM knows we got to go, go, go right now. They know we're here. Good, Molotov. Excellent spray down. Splitting these players in half, preventing them from helping each other out. Dupree charging forward, spamming the Tech-9. Forest close range opping, holding off this side. This is a real fun place to op, by the way. Right around all these little pillars and stuff. Nice pick. Another one from Forrest. Now it's just Cajun left. One versus two. Takes out Forrest and puts it into a one versus one. Bomb is down inside of the site. Cajun waiting for Freiburg to try to push in. Freiburg. Here's the player going to the site right now. Here's the bomb pickup. Takes him down as he rotates into the standard plant position. Excellent play from Freiburg. So smart to wait, listen, and then know that that player was going to be in that exact position and peek him. That is the top level of Counter-Strike right there. All right, TSM at 12 points. Ninjas in Pajamas catching up. TSM is going to have to save once again. Save rounds on Mirage are difficult. In particular on Mirage. Alu peeks it from the connector. Taking off a player very easily. Early on. TSM working on that mid-control. Look at that Cajun charging forward. That's just not going to happen. And Freiburg takes down the final player. That was a whole lot of nope. I haven't seen a single... Well, we saw that, that second round steal from TSM off of the Ninjas in Pajamas. But besides that, I haven't seen any eco rounds really go very well. And TSM, despite that fact, is going to be armor pistoling here. And then they'll be able to buy up next round fully. So this is probably the right economic decision. We talked about this in a strat talk with Envious before. This is the kind of thing they do. It looks like they're going to set up for an A take here. Pushing into the site. Molotov going down. Tech 9 armor push into the site. Nobody uses CZ apparently on TSM. And Exist is one of these players who's great at holding off these kinds of things. Look at that! Just takes down two of them with pistol shots. It's just device left. One versus three. Exist with a four frag. And he goes down because we caught all those frags. Not going to be an Al Vision, but excellent play from Exist. 12-12. All tied up. Ninjas in Pajamas is back in this game. TSM. It's looking bleak. It looks like they're going to lose it now. The Vice going to go pick at middle. Alu going to play B instead. Could actually push up at short. Prenade going down from where Alu was playing his last spot. So good thing he switched it up. Two players stack at B. That's interesting. Do they expect this to be an eco? It seems like Nip is set up for anti-eco. They should know that TSM has money. Forest, an apex spot. Gets taken down. 
That's a huge opening for TSM. One player picked on CT side opens up a lot of possibilities. One crack in the dam lets all a little water rush through. Freiburg got a hold A solo, but good thing nobody's there. Oh, but here they go. Got to be rotating back and splitting A. Coming in from two sides. One player gets picked at middle. That's going to hurt this split. Not only only got one player moving in here, he's got the AWP as well. We got Cajun B moving in here to reinforce. Freiburg taking a close range position. Needs to chill. Oh, he's going to get picked here. He's definitely getting picked here, yeah. Very awkward position. He's lucky to get that kill. Terrace now have the side. We'll be planting it. Nice attempt from Exist. I thought they were going to try to save. Now puts Git right into a one versus two. This is where Git right is at his best. He's got one player at A main. One player inside of the site, chilling on the bomb. He needs to locate these players quickly and take them down. He's got a nade and a flash. Check sandwich. Sees the player. Locates one. And will go down. One of the things you can do in a situation like that is when you locate a player, you know he's going to call, and you know the other player is going to peek you. So as soon as you see him, take cover, and then flip around. And you have a real good chance of killing the guy moving in from the other position. Alu, going to be awping. Probably going back to mid now. And nobody's there to pick, though. Terra's playing it a little bit more passive. Setting up their smokes. When players are setting up their smokes, it's the perfect time to shoot them. Because, look, they're all, none of them have their guns out. Well, Dupree's watching it this time, but look at this. Perfect time. Look at this beauty. All right, so these are the standard smokes into the site. Oh, no, this is a little bit different because they put two extras here. Instead of just blocking off uh, palace, or I'm sorry, instead of blocking off jungle, Freiburg gonna try to flash himself out here. He gets two players. That was only a half flash on him. CT's trying to rotate, but look, Terrace have the sight. They have control. Alu, great angle right here. Legs device as he jumps across down to 16. And gonna flash himself out. This is a tough situation. T's now have an opportunity to plant that bomb, and there they go. They will take it. And we got to get right. One versus four is lurking around the back here. TSM will put themselves at 14 if they take this. Oh, and look at that. Dupree right around the corner, close range. Get right thought when he killed that player that he had an entry into the site. Not going to happen. Valiant effort, though. Real ballsy to go into a one versus four like that and charge in. Very aggressive. Bold. Ballsy stupid. TSM, 14 points right now, getting ready to win this game, because look at this, Ninjas in Pajamas has got to save Alu with an op. All those players by 5'7", no armor. They just do not have the money right now. They have to rely on Alu. Let's see what he's going to be able to make happen. Terrace take mid control right now. Exist gets smoked off. Connector is smoked off, though. Teaser just waiting. Now they're kind of setting up to go short A. They're in a position where they can go anywhere they want. Now they're rotating their A main player back, so I think they are. They're going to leave Dupree here as the lurk. Haven't got any picks yet. And here they go, rotating that bomb over to middle. They can still take anywhere. They got the pick at short, so they're probably going to push into B. And look at this, Forest. 5-7. Oh! Maltov goes down right around him. They gotta check this angle. And look at that, Cajun goes right for him there. Alu only takes out one player. Looks like TSM is gonna put themselves at match point here. It is all but over for the ninjas in pajamas. And Freiburg, not even a label and a shot there. That was that was rough. Alright, this is it. Match point. Ninjas in pajamas is low because Alu spent his money on that round. He's got an armor pistol, but they're able to buy up rifles. Get right out of Famas. TSM looking like they're about to win it here. Double opping even. One player going to op at B, one at middle. They got no ops to contend with, so they know they got control here. Device charging forward, going for that pick. Almost gets it on get right. Kerrigan going for the other one here. And those players that short now. Oh, Alu gets a pick on Dupree and Forrest at middle. Huge openings for this team. It looked like it was over, but Ninjas in Pajamas now 
Just made something happen. Freiburg is bobbing and weaving, staying alive. All right, here's Freiburg is pushed up, so he knows one's close. Going to be falling back. Device creeping up at middle right now. We see the the death animation of this player is like, oh, why me? And there's the pick on Gedright. Puts it into a two versus three. This is still winnable. TSM not giving up just yet on this. Exist. Or Zipdex waiting for a player to creep up that ladder. Freiburg going to show himself. And now puts it into a one versus three. Looks like Ninjas in Pajamas will live to fight another day. Three rounds left. Nice tap shot by Device. He's going for it. 25 seconds left. Almost gets it. In a one versus three, takes down two players. All right, this is it. Another match point, but it looks like TSM might even try to, to save here. Oh, no, no, no. They're buying up. However, check this out. If Ninjas in Pajamas wins this, they have a serious chance of putting this into an overtime. But look at the money. We got, you get right with a Mag 7. We got a, a P90 on Freiburg. Both teams are low. This is it. This one round right here determines the game. If we go into an overtime, or if we continue, or, or if uh, TSM wins it. Dupree inside of the connector right now. That's their own smoke they threw to allow them to get this far. Kerrigan has control of ladder. This is a good place for terrorists to have control of because they can peek at window. This is why Alu's around the corner right now because they know they don't have that position. Terrorists moving in on bombsite A right now. Get right, close range, right around the corner with that mag 7. Waiting for these terrorists to push. They're going to be creeping forward here. Got one player at short. They won't even see Forrest. Get right is ready. And get right takes one down. They are able to get to the site. Forrest is taken down. This is it. Match point right now. Counter Terrorist trying to rotate back over here. Alu wants to try to prevent them from getting into the site. Not going to happen. Bomb is down. They got to go for it here. Three versus four. TSM very close to victory. There's another pick on those players. Just Alu left. One health. One versus three. Not a lot of time, and that's going to be the game, 16-13 to TSM. Thank you folks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I am the War Al, and I still have no closer. <laughs>